A very good day to all the participants. Today we are going to discuss about the power station pumps and pumping systems. It will be done in uh, four phases. First we will discuss about the types of pumps, then pumping system and their arrangements, then assessment of pumps and subsequently at last energy efficiency opportunities in operation of pumps. So let us start. In power station we have several types of pumps, uh, particularly not only water pumps, ancillary and other uh, material also handled by pumps. So we have condensate extraction pumps, boiler feed pump, DM water storage pump, makeup water pump, HP water pumps, ancillary pumps, air conditioning plant pumps, cooling tower uh, pumps, CW pumps. Booster pumps, water pumps for uh, raw water supply, service water supply, uh, firefighting arrangement, fuel oil. Pumps can be classified according pumps. to their operating principles. So principle these are the types of pumps service conditions find. and how they are uh, constructed. In general, we find two categories, major categories, dynamic type and positive displacement type. Dynamic means uh, it may be centrifugal or special type of pumps and positive displacement may be rotary or reciprocating. In rotary we may have internal gearing type pumps or external gearing type pumps, lobe pumps or sliding vent pumps. So in other pattern we can arrange this uh, pump classification as positive displacement pump and centrifugal pump. Positive displacement pump may be rotary that uh, may be distributed further in four classes gear pump, lob pump, vent pump and screw pump and reciprocating pumps may be piston type, plunger type and diaphragm type. Now the centrifugal pumps they are having volute casing and ring sections, barrel casing they may be radial flow, axial flow or mixed flow. Gear pumps may be Externally emitting gears arranged in such a way they will continue to suck the liquid and discharge the liquid or they may be arranged in such a way that uh, just like planetary gear, uh, one gear is placed uh, inside the external gear. So in that way uh, this may be internal gear pumping arrangement. Lobe pumps are utilized for supplying acid and alkali. They are, uh, they are two lobes are mating with each other and they are sucking the liquid continuously along the axis and discharging axially the fluid through a chamber, seal chamber. They are placed in two shafts, one is driving shaft, another is driven shaft. The driving shaft and driven shaft both are supported with bearings and there is a compact sealing arrangement. These type of pumps are specifically used for the purpose of transfer of acid or alkali as these pumps are very smooth in operation. Vane pumps are special type of pumps where vane impeller um, uh, blades, they are uh, sliding type the spring loaded and where and the entire impeller is placed eccentrically so there is a continuous suction and the vein uh, continuously move the liquid along the um, casing and then discharge it along the discharge duct so this way vein pumps are used particularly for slurry and other purposes Screw pumps are special type of pumps where we have uh, two screws or three screws fitted within the casing in such a way there may be one driving screw and other are driven screw and when these uh, screws rotates, uh, rotate so naturally the fluid sucked across the 
screw axially and then this fluid is discharged from the end of the transmission path through discharge duct. So there is a an axial suction and radial discharge across the screw. Pistons are reciprocating type of pumps which are fitted with a piston cylinder arrangement along with non-return type suction and discharge valve. The valves are the suction and discharge valves are placed in such a way when one is open another is closed and it may be single acting or double acting and depending upon the configuration there may be a duplex type or single type arrangement to operate it. Blanger pumps are another type of piston cylinder type of arranged uh, pumps which are used uh, either double plunger type or single plunger type. They are attached with a crankshaft arrangement which is continuously reciprocating and sucking the fluid and discharging the liquid. These type of pumps are mostly used in HP chemical dosing purpose wherever it is available. Diaphragm pumps are another type of uh, positive displacement pump which are used for uh, disposing, sucking and disposing high density ancillary or some other liquid. These are utilized at uh, very slow speed operation because it is handling high density fluid and uh, they are having a non-return type of suction and discharge valves and there is a diaphragm which is continuously moved to impart energy within the fluid which is getting transmitted. In centrifugal pumps we use a casing which is uh, shaped like involute and as a result of that there may be continuous suction, pressurization, imparting of energy within the fluid and then discharge of the fluid at a higher pressure and velocity. So this way centrifugal pump casing is made. There may be single suction type volute casing or double suction type volute casing. In high capacity centrifugal pumps we use number of uh, sections or stages to increase the capacity of discharge. So here uh, ring sections are made with single impeller and a casing part, involute casing part with the cage and as we go on adding these ring sections the pump capacity increases. In high capacity and high temperature application of pumps we find that uh, these stages or ring sections of the pumping is uh, encased within a barrel. So these barrels are splitted across the horizontal section and they are clamped together, bolted together. So this is called barrel casing, mostly HP heaters or high pressure uh, HP um, boiler feed pumps and high pressure pumps we use it. According to flow pattern, pump can be classified into three categories, radial flow, axial flow or mixed flow. In radial flow, pumps are sucking the liquid along the axis and discharging it radially. There may be single inlet or double inlet type, that means suction may be taking from one side or suction may be taking from both side. If it is from both side, the thrust balancing is better. Axial flow pumps are fitted with axial flow type impellers. These impellers suck the liquid along the axis and discharge it along the axis. So that's why these type of pumps are called axial flow pumps. In mixed flow pumps, the suction is though along the axis, the discharge is neither completely radial or nor axial. 
That's why it is called a mixed flow arrangement. The impellers are such that they turn around the flow passage, I mean flow quantity along the direction at the maximum capacity. Mostly in CW pumping and CEP we find this kind of arrangements. So positive displacement pumps are the pumps which are positively displacing the liquid along the di direction of flow through the pumps. There is a fixed amount of liquid taken from one end and discharged positively to other end. If these pumps are blocked, there may be pressure rise and it can damage the pumps. So positive displacement pumps may be reciprocating type or rotary type. Reciprocating types uh, pumps are having uh, either piston cylinder or plunger type arrangement with uh, crankshaft. And in case of rotary pumps, we have vane or gear or cam. And both these types of fans, uh, um, pumps are utilized uh, for high density viscous fluid transfer. Centrifugal pumps are dynamic category pumps which are actually having rotating impellers which com convert the kinetic energy of the fluid uh, increased with uh, into the pressure and velocity head at the discharge of the pump thereby pump uh, is uh, sending the fluid across the pump. There are two types of pumping devices and uh, in the centrifugal there may be double inlet types and single inlet type. Discharge may be axial or radial or mixed type. So construction wise in the centrifugal pump we have volute casing, rotating impeller and vanes within the casing. There is a suction and discharge duct. So liquid is forced into the impeller and uh, the vanes pass the kinetic energy into the liquid, liquid <coughs> rotates and leaves the impeller and due to the movement through the volute casing, the kinetic energy in, inside the uh, liquid that is converted into two heads, pressure is increasing and velocity is also increasing. However, increase in pressure is more than the velocity. The energy input in the impeller is getting converted into velocity head and pressure head velocity is actually decreases when the uh, movement of fluid takes place across the impeller to casing and pressure head increases when the movement of fluid takes place from impeller to casing due to the impact of the vents in centrifugal pumps impeller and shaft is uh, key fitted therefore they are rotating together and casing volute casing and uh, bearings are supporting this shaft and impeller is within the volute casing uh, suction is taken taking place axially and discharge is radially uh, where there is a radial flow arrangement there is a shaft balancing arrangement by some thrust collar and there is also arrangement to um, prevent any leakage uh, from the bearing uh, side that's why oil rings are there through this oil rings and uh, support arrangement the, we prevent any leakage of lubricating oil a centrifugal pump is uh, one of the simplest piece of equipment in any process plant liquid is forced into an impeller either by atmospheric pressure or in case of a jet pump by artificial pressure the vanes of impeller pass kinetic energy to the liquid and therefore causing the liquid to rotate and liquid leaves the impeller at high velocity the impeller uh, is uh, surrounded by a volute casing or in case of turbine pump a stationary diffuser ring is also available the volute or stationary diffuser ring converts the kinetic energy into pressure energy and uh, in case of uh, the impeller if you see this impeller is a circular metallic disc and uh, it has a built in passage for the flow of fluid impellers are generally made of 
either bronze or cast iron or stainless steel but uh, some other uh, sometimes we use also polycarbonate materials for anti corrosive use now number of impeller uh, that is given in a system is determined by the number of stages of the pump a single stage pump has one impeller and uh, for low head that is given it may have single suction arrangement or double suction arrangement but for multiple uh, stages uh, impellers are uh, determined by uh, number of stages if number of stages are five we find uh, five numbers of impellers now impellers are classified on the basis of uh, direction of flow from the rotation of axis i mean rotational axis suction type uh, may be single suction or double suction shape of or mechanical construction closed impeller have been enclosed by shrouds and open and semi open impellers we have vortex pump impellers that uh, depending upon the uh, configuration we have different either, either open type or closed type impeller shaft uh, is uh, attached to the impeller and this shaft is uh, transferring torque which it is receiving from the motor as uh, the shaft is coupled with the motor and uh, that is running the pump the function of the casing is to convert the uh, kinetic energy imparted by the impeller into the fluid into uh, velocity and pressure head and it is uh, actually covering encasing the impeller in such a way that it is uh, smoothly converting into pressure and velocity head according to the space provided casing may be volute type uh, which is mostly found in single stage double inlet or single inlet pumps or maybe circular type circular types actually in multi stage pumps we find circular type casing they are uh, in each stage uh, actually casing is having vanes surrounding the impeller which are uh, converting this uh, kinetic energy into velocity and pressure and, and sending it to second stage of typically uh, boiler feed pump is the major power consuming pump in all the installations uh, pumps installed in a power plant it uh, cons uh, consumes almost 20% of the total auxiliary power consumption in the power station so basically for a 210 megawatt you need two types of uh, bfps are available uh, one consumes around 4 megawatt of power and delivers at a rate of 430 tons per hour another uh, consumes 3.5 megawatt power and delivers around 398 tons per hour and both are running at a very high rpm rpm is the key uh, parameter that sh shows uh, the pumps uh, uh, size and other things and how they are consuming power to give gives so much discharge discharge head to send the water into the boiler as such all the pumps can be specified or defined as a volumetric machine to deliver uh, liquid fluid at a rated capacity with at a given temperature and pressure so it is just like uh, fans handling the uh, gaseous fluid it is handling the liquid fluid and both are volumetric machine now let us try to understand the pumping systems in fact pumping systems are uh, almost part and parcel of any process or manufacturing or product industry everywhere wherever we find a fluid flow liquid flow and it requires a transfer of liquid from one place to another we have a pump or and pumping system almost 20 percent of the world's electrical energy demand is due to pumping system and uh, it may be used for domestic commercial industrial or agricultural services even for disposal of municipal waste so naturally the requirement of pumping system is not only to transfer liquid it is also to uh, circulate liquid around the system 
where we need a transfer from one source to another location to store and from there to reclaim back to another place according to the requirement. The main components of a pumping system are pumps, prime movers, prime movers may be electric motors, diesel engines or air pneumatic systems, connecting pipings to carry the fluid and take in the fluid, valves to control flow and isolate flow, other fittings, controls and instrumentations. We may have some end use equipments which have different uh, requirements like pressure, flow. Therefore, uh, the pumping system components and configurations are determined by these end use equipments. Uh, like heat exchangers, tanks and hydraulic machines. Every fluid flow system imparts a system resistance uh, across the fluid flow passage and pressure is needed to pump the liquid through the system at a certain rate to overcome this system resistance. This pressure has to be high enough to overcome the resistance of the system and which is also called the head. Now, the total head is the sum of static head and friction head. Static head is the difference in height between the source and the destination of the liquid uh, locations uh, uh, where it is uh, stored and the source and it is independent of the flow rate. It is st uh, in static head is uh, actually a constant parameter. Static head consists of static suction head that is resulting from the lifting the liquid relative to the pump center line and it is positive if the liquid level is above the pump center line and negative if the liquid level is below pump center line and if it is negative sometimes it is also called suction lift. And static discharge head uh, that is the vertical distance between the pump center line and the surface of the liquid in the destination tank. So static head at a certain pressure depends on the weight of the liquid and can be calculated as the uh, given in the formula that head in feet pressure in PSI multiplied by 2.31 divided by specific with gravity of the liquid. Now let us try to understand the friction head or head loss due to friction in the flow passage. Uh, this is the loss needed to overcome that is caused by the resistance to the flow in the pipe and fittings and it is also dependent upon the conduit of the flow passage, its geometrical configuration, number of bends, etc. So size, condition, type of pipe, number and type of pipe fittings, flow rate, nature of liquid, everything comes into this uh, creation of friction head. It is proportional to the square of the flow rate and uh, a closed loop circulating system only exhibit friction head. There is uh, no static head. In most of the cases, uh, the total head of, uh, uh, of a system is a combination of static head and friction head and left side of this uh, figure shows a system with high static head that means destination uh, re reservoir is much higher than the source and right hand side the figure shows a low static head. Uh, may be destination at the ground level and not much higher than the source from where it is pumped. So we find system head, head has got three components against which a pump has to deliver liquid. It uh, constitute the static head difference between the uh, suction tank to delivery tank, then tank's pressure head difference and friction head in suction to delivery piping. So these three components together constitutes system head. The head and the flow rate determine the performance of a pump uh, that is shown in this uh, figure. 
so as the that is also called uh, performance curve of a pump uh, pump or pump characteristics curve so it is a uh, showing that how the head is gradually decreasing with increasing flow so as the resistance of a system increases the head will also increase so this in turn causes the flow rate to decrease and will eventually reach to zero a zero flow rate is only acceptable for a short period without causing the pump to uh, stop working and burn out churning now let us try to understand the system head and how it is configured with the capacity utilization of the pump system head is a combination of static head pressure head and friction head but uh, it has to be remembered that static and pressure head they together are uh, remain constant with capacity utilization but friction head components varies with the square of the velocity of the liquid in the flow passages so more is the flow more will be the friction head and that will create more head requirement for delivery of liquid at a desired capacity let us now try to understand the head developed by a pump for delivering the liquid in the system pump has to impart energy to the liquid so this is measured by the difference between the discharge head at the delivery end and suction head at the inlet end of the pump so pressure head difference plus velocity head difference gives the pump head okay and therefore with respect to flow rate through the pump the head developed by the pump must be equal to the system head system head means uh, static head velocity head and friction head so we get uh, static head and uh, pressure head and friction head equal to that means uh, system head must be equal to the pump head developed by the pump to make a flow at a particular rate now let us try to understand the operating characteristics whenever we employ a pump for a particular purpose we know what is the rate of flow required for that purpose so knowing the flow requirement we choose the pump select the pump uh, to get available pump head which will be matching with the system head and so we will get the uh, availability of fluid uh, flow at a i mean best efficiency point and this uh, curves are showing that head versus capacity power versus capacity and efficiency versus capacity which shows that we must uh, choose the pump in such a way that we can utilize it at maximum efficiency point and utilize it at maximum capacity for the purpose of transfer of fluid so rate of flow through a pump at a certain head is called the duty point and the pump performance curves are made up with many duty points the pump operating point is determined by the intersection of the system curve and the pump curve so as found in the figure now the best efficiency point is the pumping capacity at maximum impeller diameter or rather at which efficiency of pump is at the maximum level so any point where the system curve meets in the, with the pump uh, with respect to flow uh, before or after is definitely not the best efficiency point so we have to choose the pump select the pump accordingly so that we get the maximum efficiency now we can alter the pump operating point depending upon the requirement of flow if we want to uh, reduce the flow then as we see in the hq curve we can uh, head developed by the pump can be reduced by speed control or 
we can throttle through a valve which will increase the uh, system resistance so this way it can be flow can be reduced similarly if we want to increase the flow we can increase the head developed by the pump by increasing the rpm so that way the flow will be more system resistance will cut uh, at a later part with the uh, head developed uh, pump uh, operating curve so naturally this way you can control the uh, operating point of a pump with respect to system resistance and thereby control the flow now pump efficiency uh, calculation for that one thing is that pump hydraulic power this uh, can be calculated with respect to w q h equal to this pump hydraulic power in kilowatt w is weight density of water q is the flow rate in meter per second h is the head generated by pump in meter a, a combination multiplying these three factors we get pump hydraulic power then pump input power is uh, q uh, uh, cube root uh, vi cos phi square root 3 vi cos phi motor efficiency and pump efficiency is pump water power divided by pump input power so this way we can uh, calculate the pump efficiency now we are coming to a very important uh, parameter which is called NPSH net positive suction head now it has got uh, two way it is represented the net positive suction head available indicates how much the pump suction exceeds the liquid vapor pressure and it is characteristics of the system design and NPSH required is the pump suction needed to avoid cavitation in a pump and that is a characteristics of pump design so naturally uh, NPSH available is the energy at the inlet of the pump uh, that can be utilized to get the flow of liquid through the suction piping and uh, up to the pump into the impeller and it is represented by total suction head minus the vapor pressure of the liquid at the pumping temperature and uh, it can be represented also by equation and uh, so at any point uh, the pressure of the uh, suction line of the uh, pressure of the liquid in the suction line never be reduced to vapor pressure of the liquid so that there may be any chance of cavitation in the pump due to absence of liquid and now NPSH required that is a function of the pump design so minimum required margin between suction head and vapor pressure must be given so that there is no chance of cavitation and fail of NPSH available for the proper flow arrangement. So NPSH available to the pump is the suction head available over and above the vapor pressure of the liquid and after subtracting the friction friction losses so this way NPSH available can be calculated and it has to be seen that NPSH uh, required can be maintained in such a way that is within control for cavitation uh, free operation of pumps NPSH available must be greater than NPSH required with at least uh, some margin and if this margin is necessary uh, between uh, NPSH available and NPSH required and it may reduce and lead to cavitation when we have increase in capacity utilization of pump 
above design value increase in liquid temperature so there is more vapor pressure and increase in losses due to choke up or restriction in suction piping that is creating more losses frictional resistance so that is reducing the npsh available let us now try to understand the effect of unavailability of npsh as we know that cavitation or vaporization is the formation of bubbles inside the pump and this may occur when at the fluids local static pressure that is becoming lower than the liquids vapor pressure at the uh, operating temperature inside the pump so possible cause is when the fluid accelerates uh, in a control valve or in a in a pump impeller then may cavitation takes place with the unavailability of npsh vaporization itself uh, does not cause any damage but when the velocity is decreased and pressure increased uh, in the process of liquid imparting the kinetic energy conversion is taking place and uh, there is more of velocity i mean pressure uh, creation and vapor will then uh, definitely evaporate and collapse so this will uh, uh, create uh, damage mechanism uh, in terms of erosion of uh, vane surfaces uh, in, uh, due to uh, increase in uh, there may be increase in noise and vibration and there may be partial chokage of the impeller passage that may reduce the uh, pump performance and that may uh, in extreme case there may be uh, total loss of head so all these things may happen with unavailability of uh, required uh, npsh that is not being met with available npsh in case of positive suction system pump draws the liquid from the suction tank located above the pump level like boiler feed pump cep cw system and as a result uh, these pumps are always giving a suction head in uh, uh, a positive suction head uh, at the pump inlet when we are drawing uh, water or liquid from a sump with a foot valve in that case uh, it is a negative suction system and liquid is lifted by the pump from the suction well located below the level of the pump so this type of uh, arrangement in mostly in agricultural pumps and wet pit pumps are negative suction type arrangement let us try to understand the process of assessment of pump performance the work performed by a pump is a function of the total head and the weight of the liquid pumped in a given time now pump pumps uh, shaft power is the actual horsepower delivered by the uh, pump shaft and it is uh, calculated as a uh, hydraulic power divided by pump efficiency now pump efficiency naturally it will be hydraulic power by pump shaft power now now pump output or water horsepower or hydraulic horsepower whatever may be called uh, is the liquid horsepower delivered by the pump and can be calculated as hydraulic power equal to q into hd minus hs into rho into g where uh, q you know it is the flow rate hd is the discharge head hs is the suction head rho is the density of the fluid and g equal to acceleration due to gravity so this way you can evaluate the pump hydraulic power there are certain uh, practical difficulties in assessing the pump performance uh, if we do not have the pump specification data like uh, performance curves and most uh, companies do not keep the original equipment manu manufacturers document that provide these data so naturally uh, how the pump is loaded and how the pump flow is calibrated with re reference to the head uh, across the flow passage 
so naturally it is uh, only estimated and accordingly it is uh, modified or taken care of then uh, flow measurement uh, difficulties are there not always we find everywhere we have a flow meter to assess the flow taking place in various locations we have improper calibration of pressure gauge and measuring instruments temperatures are not always measured across the flow passages so all these difficulties can give rise to difficulty in uh, assessing the pump performance now we'll try to understand the factors those affect the pump performance and getting the optimum efficiency and where uh, we can con uh, conserve the energy the main areas of uh, having the optimization of energy consumption of a pump that includes with selection of right pump with size and speed controlling the flow rate by speed variation pumps in parallel to meet varying demand eliminating the flow control valves or bypass control system start uh, and stop control of pump or impeller trimming so all these methods can effectively give energy efficient operation of pumping systems selecting a right pump typically start with the proper choice of size and speed of the pump as the figure shows that we require it uh, original equipment ma manufacturer supplied pump performance curve and this is for a centrifugal pump uh, with a uh, with a characteristics for clear water as the pumping liquid now in selecting the pump supplier try to match the system curve supplied by the user with a pump curve that satisfy this uh, needs as closely as possible now operating point is where the system curve and pump curve pump performance curve intersect we have already discussed about that but uh, our interest is on the best efficiency point which is the uh, pumping capacity at maximum impe impeller diameter uh, that will be uh, uh, given uh, as per system requirement so best efficiency point uh, should be matched with reference to system head and all the points right or left of the best efficiency point are having lower efficiency and accordingly you have to choose the fan size and speed now best efficiency point is affected when the selected pump is oversized the reason is the flow of oversized pump must be controlled with different other methods either throttling or by bypass arrangement and these provide additional system resistance by increasing the friction in the flow passage thereby we are changing the system resistance or system head requirement as a result the system curve shifts to the left and intersects the pump curve at another point that means lower flow rate so best efficiency point is getting lowered and in Uh, that way pump efficiency is getting reduced and outflow uh, out uh, uh, flow through the pump is also getting reduced but power consumption is not getting reduced that has to be remembered so that's why uh, oversized pumps can uh, create inefficiencies and to overcome that uh, we have to give the variable speed drives or two speed drives lower rpm smaller impeller or trim trimmer trimmed impeller this can reduce the uh, system load i mean uh, uh, i mean they are not changing the system resistance but uh, they are ch changing the pump performance curve and thereby reducing the uh, total capacity control of the flow now for uh, centrifugal pumps rotating impeller generates the head and impeller peripheral velocity is directly related to shaft rotational speed or rpm therefore varying the rotational speed of the shaft directly affect the performance of the pump so 
flow rate, head, power, these performance parameters can be changed with varying the rotating the varying the rotating speed. So at different speeds, if we run the pump, uh, we get that flow rate is proportional to the rotating speed, head developed is proportional to the square of the rotation, rotating speed, and power requirement is proportional to the cube of the rotating speed. So naturally it is more efficient, effective and conserving the energy. So we find that controlling the pump speed is the most efficient way to control the flow because when the pump speed is reduced, the power consumption is also getting reduced. Now most commonly used method to reduce pump speed is variable speed drive. Now variable speed drive allow pump to uh, go for speed adjustment over a continuous range and avoiding the need to jump from one speed to another with uh, just like multiple speed pumps and variable speed drive control pump speed uh, it may be by two types of system mechanical variable speed drives include hydraulic clutches fluid couplings and adjustable belt and pulleys and electrical variable speed drives include eddy current clutches wound rotor motor controllers variable frequency drives and vfds are most popular and adjust the electrical frequency of the power supplied to a motor to change the motor rpm so this way you can uh, utilize them. In this figure we will try to understand how the speed control is uh, actually working. Suppose a pump is running at high speed N1 giving a flow of Q1 and when this uh, discharge valve is uh, wide open and it is running at N1 speed. Now if we uh, reduce the uh, speed to N2 so naturally with the speed coming to N2 which is uh, reduced uh, as a result the system resistance curve or system head is uh, cut at a lower value of capacity utilization Q2. So naturally uh, with valve wide open we, we are getting a reduced flow from Q1 to Q2 without uh, uh, any uh, excess head utilization. So Head requirement has, with the speed has also reduced as a result. So as the RPM reduced, head reduced, so power consumption is also getting reduced. So that's why it is uh, always better to have variable speed drive. Parallel operation is one of the uh, improvement methods for varying uh, demand uh, meeting operation. So when we are operating two or more pumps in parallel, then uh, the quantity of flow rate is gradually building up without changing the head. So naturally when the demand is lower we are running with a single pump. When uh, demand is increasing we are running more pumps in parallel. So naturally pump curves for single curve, two pump, single pump, two pump or three pumps in parallel they are actually adding up the flow rate. But uh, system uh, resistance or system uh, curve is not changing naturally we are getting more flow across the system and head remains discharge head remains same when head requirement is more and when uh, we have a chance of uh, going for uh, available NPSH which is uh, uh, very close proximity to required NPSH, then we use a series pumping arrangement. Just like we have booster pump before boiler feed pump or some places we have pumps in series so that we can build up the head without changing the flow capacity. So this way when series pumping is uh, uh, arranged, flow is remaining constant but head developed in successive pump is more and that is uh, improving the uh, discharge capacity at a higher pressure. So another method of control of uh, flow is by uh, flow control by closing or opening the discharge valve or which is also known as throttle control arrangement. Now this method reduces the flow but uh, this is uh, dis uh, not advantageous 
because it does not reduce the power consumption as the total head uh, required by the system due to frictional resistance increases and as we find that uh, this is actually when the valve is half closed or open so there is a throttling is a loss energy loss system resistance is increased in the suction side so uh, in the discharge side so increases vibration and corrosion also therefore it will also reduce uh, the safe operation and increase the maintenance chances so reduce the lifetime also so variable speed drives are better solution than throttling in terms of energy uh, efficient operation the flow through valve can also be reduced by installing a bypass control system that is uh, in the discharge of the pump if it is divided into two flow channels uh, in two separate pipelines one is uh, delivering the fluid to the delivery point and another is uh, returning the fluid into the suction side or to the suction store so in that way when part of the fluid is pumped back uh, and for no reason and therefore it is an wastage of energy so this option should be uh, avoided which is a type of recirculation arrangement and this recirculation initial stage startup it is essential but gradually it has to be avoided and we go for control by variable speed drive now recirculation lines are actually essential for large capacity pumps because for large capacity pumps uh, particularly uh, where we require a continuous uh, liquid flow to prevent churning and when discharge valve is closed we need to a kind of recirculation fully open so that continuous recirculation takes place and that establishes some flow and gradually when discharge valve is getting open then we gradually close the recirculation valve and that way we regulate it and minimum recirculation system is incorporated in boiler feed pump as well as in cp so these are necessary to start up and priming otherwise we cannot run the system now another method to reduce the energy consumption in pumping system is to reduce the uh, flow rate by starting and stopping the pump whenever necessary provided that this does not happen too frequently because 6.6 .6 kV motor once you are running immediately you cannot start after a tripping or stopping so naturally uh, this option is applied when we try to fill a storage tank with uh, fixed i mean constant rate of flow steady rate or we have controllers installed for minimum and maximum level according to which pump starts automatically and stop automatically so this way it can be in incorporated for better manage uh, management of energy efficient operation let us try to understand the arrangement of impeller trimming as a process of uh, energy efficient arrangement now changing the impeller diameter gives a proportional change in the impeller peripheral velocity and uh, as we change the impeller diameter it is an uh, energy efficient way to control the pump flow rate so this option should be considered in the sense that uh, the, it cannot be waste where uh, varying flow pattern exist the impeller should not be trimmed more than 25% of the original impeller size otherwise this will lead to vibration and there may be chance of cavitation so it is very uh, precisely it has to be done the balance of pump the balance of pump is uh, maintained and impeller trimming should be done in the from the all side and changing the impeller itself is a better option than trimming sometimes 
but we have to see wh what one which one is the economic option and uh, we have to see the effects depending upon the desired performance so all these things has to be balanced before we choose for going for impera trimming if we compare in this table three options to improve energy efficiency in pumps changing the control valve or trimming the impeller or adopting variable frequency drive the vfd clearly reduces power most but uh, it is having high cost now changing control valves should at all time should be avoided because it reduces the flow but uh, power consumption is not reduced rather it increases the maintenance cost so we have to judiciously utilize the services and go for uh, better control arrangement so that's the end of the brief on pump and pumping system so i hope uh, i have tried my best to capture all the points within a small span of time though they are in the pump and pumping system there are several important things uh, which ne you need to know and even for pumps you require at least 25 to 30 hours input so that you can understand the basic application of pumps working principles how it can be utilized for best performance arrangement so thank you all if you have any queries please uh, mail me and all the best to all of you